Hello and welcome to our fourth tutorial now in our Haskell uh, development series. So in this tutorial I'm going to go over type classes in Haskell, not to be confused with classes in object-oriented programming. Um, they are they have some similarities but they are quite different. They're more like interfaces um, or maybe traits in Scala, doesn't matter. Okay, so Remember last tutorial, I added, I, I defined a type. Um, I think it was the list type. Um, so it was either empty or it was um, cons a list a. And I added this mysterious deriving show. Um, so what was I doing there? Well, I was making it showable. Essentially, there's a function show, which can take in anything and return a string. Um, so I can give it a 10, I could give it a character, I could give it, um, I don't know, a list. And it works out how to turn it into a string and that, and that allows us to print stuff out in the REPL. Um, now, how does it do that? Because functions in Haskell, they, you know, how would I how would I make a function that goes from a to string but can sort of match on the type? Well, you don't you don't do that. Instead, you make something called the type class. So, for show, the type class looks like this. So it's something like class show a, where show is of type a to string. And then I make an instance of show. So an instance show for list A, and then I have to define how it shows, how it shows that thing. Um, notice that uh, type classes have capital letters um, in their name, but functions don't. Um, so show for list A, we'd pattern match, we'd go empty equals empty and show cons a x's equals um, cons plus plus show a plus plus show x's. Now, this actually won't work. If I, if I do that, it goes ambiguous. Oh, it doesn't work for a different reason. It doesn't work because I've uh, duplicated all of these definitions because they're already defined. Um, let me just fix that and get the error that I wanted. Um, so the reason the reason that doesn't work is it says no instance for show prime a arising from use of show. So what we have to do here is because I, I recursively call show prime on a. Um, but we don't know if this a here is showable. So I have to add this type class constraint. So I say a is showable. And I can do this in functions as well. Now it won't complain. See? So I can go show prime empty and uh, what's it saying? Oh, uh, <laughs> it doesn't know that that's showable. Let me go con. Yeah, yeah. But I've not defined show prime on anything else. But yeah, it would work. <laughs> Let, I can, I can, I can fix this instance show prime int where uh, show prime x equals show x. I'm just going to call the normal show for that, and then um, I can show cons uh, ten uh, empty empty that might error because uh yep it errors because it didn't know what sort of number 10 was so if i just say that's an int finally show cons 10 em uh, cons 10 empty i hope you got something out of that ramble um now with some inbuilt um type classes haskell can actually derive them which is pretty clever so it can also derive eq um, ord and um, 
EQ does type equality, so it can work out if two types are equal. Um, order about ordering, so it can work out if something is greater than something else, and it can sort of derive how to sort things. Um, so I never showed you the type for sort. Um, it's in data.list. And if I show you sort, you'll see that we're saying it maps a list of A to a list of A where A is orderable. A is of type class ord. So this is a way of, you know, writing really general code. It's quite fun. So I, I, I think I think the best way to explain this to you is um, through example again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new data type Q, and um, Q is going to represent the rationals. Um, so Q is going to equal Q int int. So it's going to be this int divided by this int. Um, now I can start by going deriving show eek. Yeah, that'll do for now. Now, first things first, show looks rubbish. So if I write q10.5, it's not obvious that's a rational number. Another thing to mention is uh, it doesn't work. So q, uh, what would that be? Two, false. It says they're not equal to each other. So you can't always derive types correctly. The reason why is because what it derived was it derived checking that that integer was equal to the to that integer on the other one, and that integer was equal to the the, the denominator on the other one, um, which is not not ideal. Um, we need this idea of sort of that the the simplified form. So we're actually going to rewrite both of these. I was just showing that you can derive them. So first show instance show of Q where show Q. Um, so it's the numerator and the denominator equals. And then we're going to say concat it's sort of a simple way, concat um, flattens lists. Um, well, one level of lists, the top level. So it's going to be show n divided by show d. So that looks a lot nicer. We have a much better way of representing, of uh, viewing our fractions now. So the next thing is equality. So we we need to find the simplified form of both of them and then compare them. So I'm going to define this simp q function, which is going to take uh, a q to q. And this is just going to simplify everything. So simp q, um, so this is going to take in q numerator denominator, and it's going to equal q of, let's say, n div c and d div c, where c is going to be the greatest common denominator of n and d. So now simp q of um, 5, 10 is going to be a half. Well, that's perfect. So now we can go and we can derive, um, not derive, we can write our instance for equality for q. Um, how are we going to do that? So what we want is we want r1 equals r2, uh, r2 equals. So because equals equals is infix, um, I can write it on the on this side like an infix. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. r1 equals r2, what does that function equal? Um, so it's going to be... Um, Numerator equals, I'll put these in brackets. Um, top two numerators are equal and the 
two denominators are equal. Perfect. And then I need another where clause um, where um, Q of N1 D1 equals simp Q of our first one and Q of uh, N2 D2 equals simp Q of R2. Um, so I, I, I've kind of secretly introduced where here. Um, I think it's quite obvious what it does. It's just a really nice way of um, simplifying, simplifying your code, uh, making lines shorter and sort of expanding things out. Uh, I can do quite complicated things on the where. So here I'm, I'm doing a pattern match on one side of the equals. Um, that's completely fine. That's completely fine. Um, so let's have a look. Great, I did that right. So here, this time, same example, it says it's true. And if I change that, false. Perfect. So we have um, defined equality. Now, what, what would be really nice is um, being able to use normal plus and divide and times, etc. Because um, we can't do that at the moment. Um, if I write plus here, it's going to error and say no instance for num q. And you might understand that error now. Um, the type definition of plus is a to a to a, where a is a number. And we've not told it how q is a number. So let's fix that. Um, so the, the num type class is quite a bit bigger than the ones we've seen before. Um, so the first thing we have to define for num, plus, and that's quite obvious what plus is. Um, we don't have to define minus. We can define um, negate instead. Um, we have to define multiplication. Um, we have to define ABS. And we have to define signum. I think that's everything. I don't, we'll see. It'll warn me if I, if I don't define everything. So first of all, add Q. Um, let's define add Q. So that's going to go Q to Q to Q. I'm defining the bodies of these functions in other functions just because it makes the code cleaner. Um, so add Q, um, not the simplest of functions. Um, so N1, D1, these are the ones we're adding. N1, D1. Now, when we add, the first thing we need is, uh, so it's, it's gonna end up being Q of N1 prime plus N2 prime. Um, divided by m. So let's go m is the lowest common common multiple of d1 and d2. n1 prime is, um, let me just sort that out so I don't have a heart attack. Um, n1 prime is going to be um, n1 multiplied by m divided by d1. Um, let me just make that the correct. So that's div. Uh, N2 prime is going to equal, it's basically the same as the line above, so times by m div d2. I think that's it. So what might be nice is that we simplify it after an addition. So if I go um, simp q, let's just roll that in and the dollar sign that we talked about last time, I think. Cool. So we've got our definition of at. Negate is much easier. Um, I'll define that in line actually. So master line. Oh, the aligning's gonna get annoying. Q of 
n and d is just going to equal q of minus n and d. I had to put the minus n in brackets, um, and that, that's just so it knows that we're negating um, n instead of uh, doing a subtraction. Let me. Oh, this is horrible already. Okay, multiplication is a lot easier than addition. Mult q, um, q n one d one q n two d two equals simp q q, and then it's going to be n one times by n two d1 times by d2. We're getting there. We're getting there. So um, mult q. So abs is getting the absolute value. Um, so we can do this in line. Uh, so that's going to equal q of, of course, if we abs um, n and d. That will give us. That will give us the ABS of the whole thing. Now, signum is a weird one. Um, signum returns sort of the equivalent of minus one if it's a negative number, zero if it's um, zero, and what else does it do? It defines oh and and one if it's a positive number, but it has to be represented in your type. So it's going to be we'll pattern match again Q and D, and that's going to equal um, Q of and then what I'll do is I'll say sig num n multiplied by sig num D because of course the integer is um, it has an instance in the type class num, so I can really easily, um, I can just recursively call signum on them. So there's another one that I've forgotten, and it's from integer. Now, um, there's a difference between the type int and integer. So I might change it to integer, integer. So integers like big num in Java or Scala, it's, um, it, it's not just uh, uh, what is it, like four or eight bytes, whatever it is. Um, it can go on, you know, all the way. It can go much past that. Although uh, operations get slower because I, you know, it's represented as a list in memory or an array in memory. Um, but integer is a different type to int. Int rolls over just like it does in C. Um, so from integer, it's very easy. Um, so that's our input n. And we're just going to say n1. So that should be it. And I have, of course, made some mistakes. Ah, oh, really silly mistakes. I've uh, duplicated one here. Two. There we go. You probably noticed that. I think, is that it? No. Nope. Uh, could not have actual type integer to q. Two is applied. Oh, I forgot. I need to. Uh, yep. Oh, and I've misspelled abs. It's always something, isn't there? Oh, and of course, because it's integers, we don't have divide. We have to use div. No, we don't, because it's R type. So we don't. We don't have anything there. Okay, now we have it. Now we have it. So let's test it all out. So abs um, q of um, minus one and ten is going to give us one tenth. That works perfectly. Um, let's do a multiplication now. Um, let's multiply that by a half. Perfect. Um, let's add them together. Yeah, great. And um, that's because all of these functions um, are 
of type a to a to a where a is a number um so probably the next thing to show you is um i said i can't remember was it yeah it was last episode um i said that there's three ways of defining types in haskell um the third way is this thing called new type so new type is like it's kind of a cross between data and type in that all you can really do is type aliases but they work in a completely different way so i could say um my int equals my int int so it looks it looks a lot like um a data definition but i can't do this i can't i can't do uh some types i also can't do this um essentially all new type does is it makes a constructor wrapper around another type and the reason we use new type instead of data is for performance reasons um it removes those constructors at runtime. It actually makes them equivalent. But what this allows us to do um, is it allows us to define different type classes, different type definitions, uh, type, type class definitions on our new types from the uh, thing we're kind of aliasing. And that's quite fun. Um, maybe if I said, as a better example, uh, rev string. And this is going to be a uh, rev string string. And then what I could do is I could instance um, show on, uh, don't need brackets, rev string um, where show of rev string s equals reverse s. Is that you spell reverse? Reverse. We'll find out in a second. Yes, that is how you spell reverse. So that's quite cool. So I can have a string. So s equals um, hello world. And then I could say s prime equals rev string s. So the type of s is string or list of char in that case and the type of s prime is rev string and that means when i show s it's hello world and when i show s prime it's hello world backwards it's interesting um so new types are a way of making things have a different because i can't define show twice on string obviously so um I think that's all for type classes. Um, next time, I think we'll look at folds. So it'll be a bit more about how you think about programming in Haskell and an introduction to folds. Um, but yeah, we'll revisit type classes. Um, they get a bit more complicated uh, when you add things like parameters and we'll go over some sort of more famous type classes, if you like, functor, applicative, monad, monoid. Um, and after that, that's only two tutorials. You're pretty much set to write proper code in Haskell. Great. So see you next time.